Mrs. Uh, Daryl Zanuck was his uh, leading lady at the time. What was her name then? Uh, Virginia Fox. Yeah. You remember? There was a scene in one of the movies where she was supposed to fall and catch by her clothes on a moose head. Yeah. This guy says, put her up there and leave her there. We put her up. Then he yelled, lunch. <laughs> <laughs> It was worth your life to work for this fellow. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Zanuck was going to be a part of your life tonight, Buster, but at the last second, she uh, got a severe case of bronchitis and could not be here. She's watching and sends her love, of course. Oh, she's a good sport, though. Say, you remember the time she saw the smoke coming outside her dressing room window? You remember? And she yelled, fire. And she tried to get out the door. It was locked. She went to the phone. No answer. Then you rescued her. Before she really fainted, then she found out about you lighting those smoke pots out there. <laughs> when, le <Wow. laughs> when leading ladies uh, left your studio buster, they could face anything in the world, I think. Thank you for bringing us those memories, Mr. Eddie Klein. <laughs> With a sure instinct for laughs, you create most of your own great comedy situations. And how we loved it when you got into one mess after another. Now here, we see Keaton against a cyclone in Steamboat Bill Jr. Now the cyclone uh, blew the hospital away, and there goes Buster in his bed. Oh man, what a storm. Look out, Buster. The buildings have to fall on you there if you're not careful. Just missed it. Now the, the wind has really taken hold. Oh, it's really got you there. Keep fighting, boy. You'll make it. Don't give up. Don't give up, Buster. You'll do it. <laughs> well, hilarious comedies like that one make you rich. And meanwhile, you marry Natalie Talmage. And you have two sons. You own a mansion, your own movie studio, a yacht, everything. For a fellow with a lot to lose, Buster took terrible risks. In the most dangerous scenes, he would never, never use a double. Well, that's the voice of one of your directors. In the 1920s, he went on to become one of the best known and best loved character actors of all time. One of Hollywood's leading citizens, ladies and gentlemen, here's Mr. Donald Fritz. I remember you distinctly. <laughs> <laughs> we were afraid what this fellow might do as Buster, you know. We're all kind of standing by. Buster uh, gave you chills many times, eh, Mr. Chris? Mr. Edwards, I still gasp when I think of one scene that Buster did. He had the entire front of an apartment building. It was three stories high. Yes. And he planned for the entire front of the building to fall over. And he planned that one little window at the top should fit over him, and he hoped that he was standing in the place where that was. And when that fell, the cameraman trained him. Uh, but, well, here's that very scene. Now watch this and see how you'd like to have been in Buster's shoes that day! <laughs> how do you feel today seeing it, Buster? Would you do it again? Oh, no. no. <laughs> now here's another scene we'll never forget. Now this is you, Buster. If you remember, I directed a picture with you called The Navigator. This is you under the water. And that day, someone had neglected to put the piano wire on the top of your diver's helmet. And you had got jumped over the side of an ocean liner in about 150 feet of water with only the telephone connection on your helmet. And if it hadn't been for that one small wire, we'd have lost one of the kindest men I ever knew in my life. <laughs> this man gave away his salary about every week. That's well, true, young man. Thank you, Donald Chris, for memories of days when Buster Keaton was the talk of Hollywood for his daredevil courage and his kind heart. <laughs> Mr. Chris said uh, Hollywood would have lost one of its kindest, kindest gentlemen. Ahead of us, Buster Keaton, is a time when you nearly lose your famous sense of humor. Life smashes you to the ground. And how you pick up the pieces and go on, we'll find out in just a moment. You're ready for a little relaxation here, aren't you? Sit so down. Sit back, take it easy, Buster. First, let's turn our attention to this important message from Press. Thank you, and back to This Is Your Life, Buster Keaton, great comedian of the golden age of comedy. And here's a scene, Buster, where you're a freshman being tossed in a blanket by your fellow students. There you go. Now watch the lady. <laughs> How are you to know she was getting dressed, you know? 
Godmother. Yo! Oh. <laughs> Black Queen ends in a funny fall here in the 1930s. Ranking in world acclaim with Chaplin and Harold Lloyd, it seems you can never fall. You even surmount the move to sound movies. But then comes a shock, the breakup of your marriage. With almost all your money gone, you spend a period when you just don't care. And what about your picture career, Buster? What happens to it and why at that time? Well, it just came to a stop. For years, you kind of fight things within yourself, in a way. Conquering only when you realize that uh, maybe your athlete's body is at stake. By then, you, a former great star, wind up in an obscure job as an idea man for other people's pictures. Material things were gone, but Buster still had his real wealth. He had talent. He still had it. Nothing could hide it. Well, Fred. yeah, no trouble identifying that voice, is there, Buster? A good friend who, like yourself, has made the world laugh. Fred Skelton! <laughs> did Buster contribute ideas for your comedy pictures at MGM, Red? He most certainly did, but uh, Buster was so modest that I never knew that he was the one that was writing all these wonderful scenes and things that I was doing in the pictures. I remember one picture, Watch the Birdie, where uh, I was a cameraman. Yeah. And I had, I, I want to get a newsreel shot, so I see this fire truck coming. I run and jump on the fire truck. I slip and I fall and I almost kill myself. I think going about 25 miles an hour. I hang on the side of it, holding my hat, and it pulls into the fire station. Typical <laughs> <laughs> Keaton. Well, I, what's so funny about it, I mean, not only was it funny on the screen, but Buster stands in the background and goes... <laughs> <laughs> Did Buster give you any of his tricks of pantomime? Too? Yes, but he was very, very modest about this. He would always take me over to one side, and any time he had an idea, he would uh, say, I think this would be a funny thing to do. And then uh, I would go out and do it, but he always tried to make other people believed it was my idea. That was really busted. Uh, his, uh, his dressing room was kind of a get-together for the whole gang, wasn't oh, it? He had all Didn't he make up gadgets. some funny gadgets? What were some of the gadgets he <laughs> oh, had? Oh, he had a, a cigarette lighter, a uh, goldfish bowl, revolving goldfish bowl for tired goldfish. Yes. <laughs> besides, good, <laughs> besides good comedy ideas, did you gain anything else from the poker-faced kid yes, here? Yes, I most certainly did. I, I learned the greatness of a comedian. I learned that uh, Buster didn't care who got the laughs. He looked way beyond that. He looked to the people that needed laughter, needed one of the greatest cures like medicine, is laughter. And I believe that you're the one of the greatest doctors of comedy. Believe me. One great comic, <laughs> giving credit to another great comedian here. Say, um, Fred. Did you, did you ever make the great stone face Keaton break down and laugh or not? Well, I, I think he'd uh, sit back and watch all the things that he did. So he seen me do them. I told him my salary. I think he laughed at that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Red Skelton. God bless you. You'll see him a little later here. <laughs> Memories. Memories of many pretty girls in your comedies. But you don't think of marriage again for a long time. Still taking care of your uh, parents. Oops, there's a scene where the whole water came into the audience there. You, <laughs> it was such scenes as that that paid the bills, that gave you the money to take care of your pay, uh, uh, parents. But then later on, when things got rough, even on your small salary, here in the days where you're handing out ideas, to the bigger studios and all. Years later, you move in with your mom into the first little house that you'd bought for. And to your home comes a girl who has made friends with your family, a girl who is to remove any possible remainder of disappointment in your life. And here she is, Eleanor Norris, who became your devoted wife 16 years ago, Mrs. Keaton. Here's a pretty girl. <laughs> Come on, sit here, my uh, buster. <laughs> What have these... I need to get my time. I know. <laughs> Fix it up there, Mommy. What have these years of marriage <laughs> to Buster meant, Eleanor? Well, we've been very happy. Of course, we've had some lean times, too. But Buster's been so happy, he's wanted to go back to work. And I've been very proud of the way he's come back into prominence. You bet. 